this was on a Thursday night, a school night, and we never let her go out on the school night, but it was a special time for all the seniors for getting together. And, you know, they do the bed sheets, signed her name and all. And uh, I was sitting there in the living room in the rocking chair, and she got, she got dressed, and she came in there. She leaned over and put her hand on the chair and said she was fixing to leave. She said, I'm not going to wear my jewelry because we'll be painting and doing that. She leaned over and gave me a kiss. And I watched her. I literally watched her walk out that back door. I love you, Mama. She was always on time home or at the call. I mean, we had this thing, you know. Uh, she was like, if you were, were going to be late, you call me. No problem. But she didn't show up. So I went looking for her. That's when we found the car. The neighbor's daughter had found the car and uh, yeah. they called the sheriff's department, got the law out there, you know. And, uh, and I went looking for her. The Debbie pulled up and I pulled up at the same time. We pretty much was looking before we got the news and, and three days later we found out she was found dead. You know, you right after it happens and everything, you, we didn't want to go out around town, you know, because you see people and you see the pity in their eyes. One thing we've got is a loving community. This is true. You've got your small town, everybody come together. And everybody stuck together. Yeah, when she went missing, ordered the people that came to the house come and go and just check in to see if they could do anything. I mean, how many hundreds of flowers did we put out? Did they put I out? I think it was over 20,000 flowers put out within two days. And just knowing that they were there, that was <clears throat> sort of like a brace. They bracing and bracing us up, holding us up. And we knew they were there. They ain't a soul in the hay hers. Just we, cut, we still call it midnight, they'd be right there. Think about watching her daddy walk her down the aisle to get married. I think about sitting in the waiting room waiting on that first grandbaby. And, uh, think about if she'd have had two or three years, we'd have had two or three grandbabies. If she'd have moved off, you know, somewhere else after college, work. You know, you, you just, you wonder. Because that was her life. That was what she was going to do. That was her future. And they took it away from her. It took me 23 years to clean her room out. Take her clothes down out of the closet and clean her dresser. They don't realize what they took from us. You know, and I don't wish that on nobody. But if they had lost one of their own since that time, then they may know a little bit of what they took from us. Unless, it, unless they've experienced it, they don't really know what they took from us. It's like having a big water sponge and just having all the water squeezed out. I mean, it just squeezes the life out.